Hello, my name is Dr. Devaruti Haldar and I am the professor for Department of Research, United World School of Law, Gandhinagar, Gujarat. I am also the Honorary Managing Director for Center for Cyber Victim Counseling. This module is titled as Cyber Offenses under the Indian Penal Code. This module will help us to understand about the separate categories of cyber offenses recognized under Indian Penal Code. To know about the definitions of such offenses and to know about the penology of such offenses. This module is divided into five parts. Introduction, classification of offenses under the Indian Penal Code, offenses under the Criminal Law Amendment Act and summary and conclusion. The main penal code for all the offenses in India is the Indian Penal Code, which was drafted in 1860. Cyber crimes being an invent of the present century, Indian Penal Code in its original version or many of its amended versions did not have provisions to deal with several types of offenses committed either with the aid of digital and information communication technology or through it. However, some of the existing provisions were extended to cover some offenses of cyberspace, but these were criticized as such provisions failed to provide solution after the Information Technology Act came into being, the Indian Penal Code was further amended in the light of the SAID Act to cover its scope to deal with several offenses as penal offenses with heavier punishments. Classification of cyber offenses in the Indian Penal Code. Cyber offenses may be largely classified into three groups depending upon the nature of the victims. These are the corporates, the government and the individuals. Some of the offenses like sedition, rioting, economic crimes including cheating etc. were recognized by the provisions already existent in the Indian Penal Code. However, the scope of these provisions were extended to support similar provisions of Information Technology Act. We would discuss about these offenses now. Number one is wedging war against the nation. Even though such offense was recognized under the Indian Penal Code under Section 121 with the advent of the usage of information technology and digital technology towards wedging war against the state. It became essential to expand its scope. Later, with the Information Technology Act 2000 amended in 2008, Section 66F was in introduced to combat cyber terrorism, which included elements of wedging war against the state as well as the global human society. Sedition. Similar to waging war against the state, sedition was also recognized under Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code as a traditional offense. Sedition was defined as whoever by words either spoken or written or by signs or by visible representation or otherwise brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law in India shall be punished with imprisonment for life to which fine may be or added or with imprisonment which may extend to three years to which fine may be added or with fine. Explanations to section 124A further states that expression disaffection includes disloyalty and all feelings of enmity. 
Explanation 2 states that the comments expressing disapprobation of measures of the government with a view to obtain their alteration by lawful means without exciting or attempting to excite hatred, contempt or disaffection do not constitute an offence under this explanation or section. Explanation 3 states that comments expressing disapprobation of the administrative or other action of the government without exciting or attempting to excite hatred, contempt or disaffection do not constitute an offence under this section. However, with the advent of digital and information communication technology, several issues were witnessed whereby sedition or attempts to sedition were made through information and digital communication technology. In such cases, Section 66A was introduced by the Information Technology Act 2000 amended in 2008, which had very broad scope to include anonymous, insulting, etc. words as offensive speech. This provision was also being used to regulate sedition along with Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code. But this provision was challenged in the Supreme Court in Shreya Singhal versus others versus Union of India and others in 2013 and it was cracked down as unconstitutional. In the absence of this provision, Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code is being used as main law to regulate online sedition, rioting. Section 146 of IPC defines rioting as whenever force or violence is used by an unlawful assembly or by any member thereof in prosecution of the common object of such assembly, every member of such assembly is guilty of the offence of rioting. This definition may give an impression that it may not be included as a cyber offence. But considering the fact that spreading hatred against a specific community or instigating violence against a specific group or by way of spreading of images or speech through digital communication technology or information communication technology may be possible in the present day, this provision from the Indian Penal Code is being considered as an aiding provision which may be read along with the provisions from Information Technology Act to regulate such activities. Cheating and cheating by impersonation. Traditionally, sections 415, 416 of the Indian Penal Code defines cheating and cheating by impersonation by stating that whoever by deceiving any person fraudulently or dishonestly induces the person so deceived to deliver any property to any person or to consent that any person shall retain any property or intentionally induces the person so deceived to do or omit to do anything which he would not do or omit if he were not so deceived and which act or omission causes or is likely to cause damage or harm to that person in body, mind, reputation or property is said to cheat. And a person is said to cheat by personation if he cheats by pretending to be some other person or by knowingly substituting one person for another or representing that he or any other person is a person other than he or such other person really is. It may be pertinent to note that Information Technology Act 2000 amended in 2008 also provided similar provisions under Section 66C which states that whoever fraudulently or dishonestly make use of the electronic signature password or any other unique identification feature of any other person shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine which may extend 
to rupees 1 lakh. Further, Section 66D also mentions about cheating by personation by using computer resources and it states that whoever by means of any communication device or computer resource cheats by personation shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine which may extend to one lakh rupees. However, it has been the practice of Criminal Justice Administration to use both the provisions including section 419 which speaks about punishment for cheating by impersonation etc. Such cases may be evident in cases like phishing, job scam or even e-commerce frauds but noticeably in cases where e-commerce is involved whereby the victim gets cheated through e-commerce portals neither the IPC that is Indian Penal Code nor the Information Technology Act may extend much help to regulate the liabilities of the intermediaries or the web portals especially because they may be immune by third party liability policies developed by themselves. Information Technology Act under section 79 also speaks about due diligence by stating that notwithstanding anything contained in any law for the time being in force but subject to the provisions of subsections 2 and 3 of this section that is section 79 an intermediary shall not be liable for any third party information data or communication link hosted by him. The provisions of subsection 1 shall apply if the functions of the intermediary is limited to providing access to a communication system over which information made available by third parties is transmitted or temporarily stored or the intermediary does not initiate the transmission, select the receiver of the transmission and select or modify the information contained in the transmission the intermediary observes due diligence while discharging his duties under this act and also observes such other guidelines as the central government may prescribe in this behalf. The provisions of subsection 1 of section 79 shall not apply if the intermediary has conspired or abetted or aided or induced whether by threats or promise or otherwise in the commission of the unlawful act, selling etc. of obscene materials to children. While Information Technology Act 2000 provided punishment for child pornography under section 67 of the pre-amended version, Indian Penal Code also provided preventive provisions to restrict sale transfer etc of obscene materials to children under section 293 which says whoever sells lets to hire distributes exhibits or circulates any to any person under the age of 20 years any such obscene object as is referred to in the last preceding section or offers or attempts so to do shall be punished on first conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and with fine which may be which may extend to 2000 rupees and in the event of a second or subsequent conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years and also with fine which may extend to 5000 rupees this provision was clubbed up with section 67 of the Information Technology Act to regulate the issue of child pornography in Avinash Bajaj versus State which is popularly known as Bazi.com case. Sale etc of obscene materials. Section 292 of the Indian Penal Code prescribes punishment for sale etc of obscene books, pamphlets etc to people irrespective of their gender. 
The provision states as follows. For the purpose of subsection 2, a book, pamphlet, paper, writing, drawing, painting, representation, figure or any other object shall be deemed to be obscene if it is lascivious or appeals to the prurient interest of all, if its effect or where it comprises two or more distinct items, the effect of any one of its items is, if taken as a whole, such as to tend to deprave and corrupt person who are likely having regard to all relevant circumstances to read, see or hear the matter contained or embodied in it. Whoever sells, lets to hire, distributes publicly, exhibits or in any manner puts into circulation or for purposes of sale, hire, distribution, public exhibition or circulation makes, produces or has in his possession any obscene book, pamphlet, paper, drawing, painting, representation or figure or any other obscene object, whatever or imports, exports or conveys any obscene object for any of the purposes aforesaid or knowing or having reason to believe that such object will be sold, let to hire, distributed or publicly exhibited or in any manner put into circulation or takes part in or receives profits from any business in the course of which he knows or has reason to believe that any such obscene objects are for any of the purposes aforesaid, made, produced, purchased, kept, imported, exported, conveyed, publicly exhibited or in any manner put into circulation or advertises or makes known by any means whatsoever that any person is engaged or is ready to engage in any act which is an offence under this section or that any such obscene object can be procured from or through any person or offers or attempts to do any act which is an offence under this section shall be punished on first conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to two years and with fine which may extend to 2000 rupees and in the event of a second or subsequent conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to five years and also with fine which may extend to 5000 rupees. However, this section does not extend to any book, pamphlet, paper, writing, drawing, painting, representation or figures, the publication of which is proved to be justified as being for the public good on the ground that such book, pamphlet, paper, writing, drawing, painting, representation or figure is in the interest of science, literature, art, of learning or other objects of general concern or which is kept or used bona fide for religious purposes. Any representation sculptured, engraved, painted or otherwise represented or on in any ancient monument within the meaning of ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains at 1958 or any temple or any car used for the conveyance of the idols or kept or used for any religious purposes. As the provision suggests, obscenity law was developed on this and it was applied to numerous cases of cyber obscenity along with the provisions from Information Technology Act 2000 which was amended in 2008 which states in section 67 that whoever publishes or transmits or causes to be published in the electronic form any material which is lascivious or appeals to the prurient interest or if its effect is such as to tend to deprave and corrupt persons who are likely having regard to all relevant circumstances to read, see or hear the matter contained or embodied in it shall be published shall be punished on first conviction 
with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to two years or three years and with fine which may extend to five lakhs rupees and in the event of second or subsequent conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to five years and also with fine which may extend to 10 lakhs rupees. However, the Information Technology Act 2000 which was amended in 2008 also included section 67A for regulating sexually explicit materials by stating that whoever publishes or transmits or causes to be published or transmitted in the electronic form any material which contains sexually explicit act or conduct shall be punished on the first conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to five years and with fine which may extend to 10 lakh rupees and, it, and in the event of second or subsequent conviction with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years and also with a fine which may extend to 10 lakh rupees exception to this provision further states that this section and section 67 does not extend to any book pamphlet paper writing drawing painting representation or figure in electronic form the publication of which is proved to be justified as being for the public good on the ground that such book pamphlet paper writing drawing painting representation or figure is in the interest of science literature art or learning of other subjects of general concern or which is kept or used bona fide for religious purposes it is present practice of the police to club up sections 67 and 67a of the information technology act along with section 292 of the indian penal code in most of the cases of cyber obscenity However, it must be noted that there is no definition of the term cyber pornography in any law in India. The police in several locations have used sections 67A, 67 of the Information Technology Act along with section 292 of the Indian Penal Code. Due to this lack of focused law, many cases of online sexual offences targeting women may not get proper legal attention and proper legal protection, harming the modesty of women. Section 509 of Indian Penal Code provides punishment for harming the modesty of women by words, gesture, speech, etc. It may be pertinent to note that in the absence of specific law on cyber pornography or cyber bullying, Section 509 is often clubbed up with Sections 67 and 67A of the Information Technology Act to regulate cases of online gender bullying or offensive and insulting speech targeting women. Cyber offences recognized under the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013. The Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013 brought in several changes in regulating sexual offences against women. This included recognition of several cyber offences like cyber stalking and voyeurism. It may be pertinent to note that voyeurism was already recognized as an offense under section 66 e which prescribes punishment for violation of privacy 66 e of the information technology act is gender neutral whereas section 354 c of the indian penal code which was included by the criminal law amendment act and which prescribes punishment for voyeurism is specifically women friendly it prevents capturing of images of private body parts and also private acts of women which in general is not expected to be seen in public it also prescribes punishment for disseminating such images without the permission of the women concerned cyber stalking on the other hand is included within the definition of stalking under section 354d 
for the purpose of this module, the definition of cyber stalking may be culled out from the broader definition of stalking under section 354D as we say, any man who follows a woman or contacts or attempts to contact such woman to foster personal interaction repeatedly despite a clear indication of disinterest by such woman or whoever monitors the use by a woman of the internet, email or any other form of electronic communication or watches or spies a person in a manner that results in fear of violence or serious alarm or distress in the mind of such woman or interferes with the mental peace of such woman commits the offence of stalking. Section 354D of the Indian Penal Code prescribes punishment for imprisonment of maximum three years. Summary and conclusion. As may be seen from the above, while some of the cyber offences were made to be recognised and punishable under the Indian Penal Code through the existing provisions, some, especially cyber stalking and voyeurism, were recognised under the Criminal Law Amendment Act. But still then, the present Indian Penal Code does not present a uniform picture of the cyber offences as several offences are recognised under the Information Technology Act and have different penology than those prescribed under the Indian Penal Code. However, the present practice shows that police have police may use provisions from both the Indian Penal Code as well as Information Technology Act to enforce heaviest punishment. But this must also be noted that several offences, especially against women and children, are still not recognised. These include revenge porn, cyberbullying, etc. Thank you.